Hey guys, Roger, see you scrapping. Uh, well, it's getting pretty empty in here. Um, I'm almost, almost completely out of the shop. I uh, got everything moved to storage. Um, it's rough working out of storage. I don't have regular workspace. There's no electricity in the storage. Uh, I'm still looking for uh, shop space, uh, keep running into the same problem that uh, e-waste Mike had. You know, you call these people, they got places for rent and nobody will call you back. Uh, one of them is even the place where I'm renting storage from. Uh, the uh, They'll rent storage space to you on site, but their commercial storage you have to deal with their commercial leasing agent out of Las Vegas, Nevada. And I have called her three or four times and have yet in the last two weeks and have yet to receive a call back from her. Uh, not that it really matters. I talked to another renter over there and I, God, it's, it's a nice space and I could, you know, in, three or four months in a space like that, I could I could make the $1,100 a month rent. Uh, I, I have no doubts about that. It's that first, you know, four months that I just, I doubt I'm going to be able to do. So, uh, looking elsewhere. Uh, but in the meantime, I have three items here to tear down. A uh, microwave, a small flat screen TV and this is something I've never seen tore down is a uh, home blood pressure monitor. So I figured I'd do these. Uh, it's Saturday night, late Saturday night, about 10 o'clock and uh, I'm bored out of my mind. So let's do this and let's see what's inside. Uh, Looks like you know, there's a battery compartment here. So garbage, uh, batteries, corroded batteries. And the alkalines, I can I can throw those in with my shred. Uh, the scrapyard has no problem with that. Um, it's the lithium ions that they don't want. Uh, it's going to be number one Phillips. basic couple wires for the battery compartment uh, that's garbage and a circuit board uh, this is all airline hair uh, the cuff the pump uh, so that's all garbage and one Small little circuit board. And that's going to be a low grade circuit board. Uh, these wires are so thin, I'm not even going to tear them off. Um, underneath the LCD display, there is a nice IC chip if you wanted to go after that. Um, other than that, this will... 
I'm not sure what that is. This is this was a a hand pump. Um, so there won't be any motor in there. Uh, but that's all that's all ferrous metal in there. Um, I don't know if we can get that apart or not. I should say with the tools I have here available, um, I'm putting together a small tool kit to carry with me. Oh, I'm sorry, I may not be in frame there. The nice thing about the new shop is I've got so many ideas on how to improve it and to set up an actual, um, filming station. Um, I'm hoping those ideas all work. Uh, usually it looks better on paper than it does in practice, but we will, we will find out. And the other bad thing is, is once I'm out of here, I can't, I won't be able to use my uh, desktop computer, which has my editing software on it. Um, so any videos I do until I get a new shop will have to be one shot straight off the phone and uh, upload to YouTube. Or I can do it on the GoPro and do it on my laptop but my editing software is not on my laptop. Um, I could check into others, I guess, but I really like the, uh, I don't know about really like, I don't have enough, enough knowledge, I guess you could say, to like it or dislike it, but that's what I'm used to. Um, oh, I think there's a little copper in there. Oh, come on. me problems. Come on. There we go. Okay, so that'll all go on my low-grade circuit boards. Uh, and then I believe that top piece is copper. Don't see. I don't know if those are. Those are not screws. nuts here on the back.
There we go. Stick a screwdriver in there and give it a little twist. So that is I guess that's just a valve a one-way valve so that the air goes into and stays in the pumps that's all that's all tin shred uh, but this I believe is copper let me get the magnet And it is. No sticky sticky. So that's not quite thick enough to call number one. Uh, so that will go into my number two copper. And the rest is plastic garbage. So that's it on the blood pressure monitor. Uh, let me get set up for the TV and we'll be right back. All right, so next on the list, I got a little 32 inch uh, digital uh, TV. And there's not a whole lot to these either. There is, there is a whole lot of screws though. And a whole lot of plastic. And while researching the new shop, um, I found a possible lead on a local company that recycles plastic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until I get into the new shop, get set up, and approach them guys and see what all we need to do. And those two screws are already gone. That should be it. Like I said, should be. Always miss one. Always do. So for now, that is garbage. And then the innards. Um, not a whole lot to these. Usually, I've kind of got a set routine on doing these. Uh, I usually take all the wire out first. So one thing I'm getting used to is I am taking my wire to my local yard now and I am no longer required to strip or to clip off the uh, the ends which is nice um, it's about 10 cents a pound less than going to Bloomington but at, at 10 cents a pound I don't have to make that 40 mile trip uh, to Bloomington, it's just it's five miles across town. Uh, so yes, I'm making less money, but I'm also incurring less expenses. Um, you know, it's a that's an hour and a half round trip.
plus the unloading time. Um, plus, I'm sure if I figured in the, the time involved in clipping the end, I'm coming out money ahead now. Uh, the speakers just sit in there. Those are those are tin shred. this ribbon wire here and I still save these I cut the gold ends off of them um, okay we'll get the bigger boards off first because they require the same same bit Tin shred. Got to get these two little riser nuts off. I'll see in my shop, I've got a dedicated drill uh, for getting those. So this is going to slow me down a little bit brass or tin they are tin Same with this one on the coax connector. Um, those are always either 7 16 or a half inch. And I've got a got a designated socket set up for those, but it's in storage. So much fun. Shred and shred. All right, now this is, I'm gonna take that off to get a better look at what's underneath. crystal oscillator off so we'll put that to the side and nothing but a flat pack IC under there uh, not a lot on this board uh, it would probably it would probably go to board sort as a as a low peripheral. Uh, it will go to my yard as a mid grade. Um, that way, I don't incur shipping expenses. Back is empty, so that's a mid grade board. And this one over here. This one is a no-brainer. This is a low-grade board. Low-grade brown power board. Uh, you can take off the MOSFETs for the copper, the transformers for the copper, uh, the aluminum heat sinks. I just sell I just sell them straight to my yard for uh, uh, low-grade power. 
Uh, I get 26 cents uh, a pound on those and spend absolutely no time on them. Okay, now I got to switch bits to the number one. Number one Phillips. We got this board here. Oh, missed a screw. Another one of those gold fingered ribbon wires. Now this board here, um, see I still have trouble with my peripherals. This is definitely a low peripheral. We've got visible gold in here, visible gold here. Um, and what I would consider a densely populated, uh, small flat packs, uh, IC chips, MLCCs, uh, no tantalums. I would consider this a high grade peripheral. And I do save those to send a board sort. Um, absolutely nothing on the back. Uh, so that's what I'm calling that as a high grade peripheral. Um, Shark Scrapper has a really good video on identifying the different types of boards. Uh, go check his videos out. Uh, but I, I think he would agree this, this would be a, um, high peripheral. And if not, Chris will correct me. So, um, I would throw the rest of this into shred, but we've got one more important board to get. And it's not much, but there again, it all adds up. So I got to get all these shred. plastic and then these two small little finger strip boards down here I take those off get the rubber off of this well, there's rubber on both of them I guess garbage garbage Okay, so these boards here, these are, without a doubt, high-grade peripheral. Um, all the visible gold, small little MLCCs, well-populated. Um, there again, it's not much, but I've been saving up for six months, and I've got a 40-pound box full of these. Um, I'm not really sure what board sort's paying now. It's... Uh, it's like in the two, 245 a pound range. So they're, they're nothing to sneeze at and they're very easy to ship. So the rest of this, my yard, I don't have to break this down any further. I don't have to get the screen off of it. Um, just get the electronics off of it. My yard will take that as tin shred. 
So that is it on the TV. Um, we'll go get the microwave. I will see in editing what we're doing on time. We'll either do the microwave with this or if the video is getting too long, we'll throw the microwave in a separate video. But either way, I'll see you in a bit or I'll see you in the next video, one of the two. Okay guys, now for the microwave. Um, I figured I'd go ahead and run all three of these at the same time. Um, I know it makes for a longer video, uh, but I need to watch time. I'm about 450 hours away from monetization. I know a couple of you have been running my playlist. Um, and that's greatly appreciated. The, the limited time I've got uh, while doing all this here, uh, getting this shop tore down, uh, hasn't let me put out very many videos, but daily my watch hours are going up and I greatly appreciate that, guys. Um, so the first thing I always, I've got a, I've got a set routine. Uh, I know we all have our own favorite way of, of doing different things uh, my routine is the first thing I grab is this turntable motor underneath and simply a matter of prying this cover off which I don't have my normal pry bar there we go Some more shred and it comes out with a simple screw clip the wires and there's a nice little motor now these a lot of people don't waste their time with these. I like them. They're easy to break down and there's like three or four ounces of copper in there. Uh, multiply that by the number of microwaves that you get and it adds up quickly. Um, while we've got it turned upside down, uh, we'll remove the four screws for the transformer. And with there being four screws like this, I know that's a transformer and not an inverter. business side of the microwave is always going to be on your controller side. So, what I do is I take the screws off the side, which are almost always Phillips. And I will save those. Now on the back, now this is unusual. The, the, fan, the internal fan motor here is normally a Phillips. This one is the security bit along with these other two. So, uh, get my security bits out. I think it's this one. Nope, next size down. There it is. Now the one for the fan. The one for the fan motor. I'll throw my screw bucket these other two. Just like the ones on the side, I will save. Actually, a size smaller than that, even. There we go. All right, I got those two saved. Now, instead of taking the whole entire cover off, I see a lot of guys do that. 
then then it becomes awkward uh, loading loading into your trailer, your truck, whatever when you when you're taking a shred load. I just peel it back uh, like that, and then that will reveal all of our goodies inside. So, first thing I will do is grab the power cord. I want to cut the two grounds up here. And then cut the power cords as they go into this small circuit board. That pulls through. And instead of my my yard in Bloomington, if I, if I cut the ends off, they call it number two insulated copper. Uh, I leave the ends on now, and my local yard calls that 40%, um, which is the highest that they do. You know, I, I see uh, a lot of the, uh, especially the Canadian recyclers, uh, you know, if it's, if it's a single strand, uh, they call that 60%, a multi-strand is 40%. My yard calls it 40% and 30%. For what reason, I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter what they call it. What, it ma what matters is, is what they pay you for. All right, then we're gonna clip those wires. Um, this little circuit board's just tabbed in. Get the ground wire off of that. And that's a low grade uh, circuit board. I get 26 cents a pound for those. Uh, you can take the uh, toroid off for the copper. I, I don't, I don't, I, I do too much volume. I can't waste my time with that. So it'll all go into low grade, um, low grade circuit boards. Then I take the fan assembly out, cut the power wires for that, pull your fan blade, and I apologize if I keep going out of frame. I'm, like I keep saying, damn it, Jim, I'm a scrapper, not a videographer. That one's a little difficult, but that is plastic garbage. And that reveals the two screws to remove the motor. Actually, those are the wrong two screws. I need these two. Another copper bearing motor that I put over here. Now I throw all these small motors into a five gallon bucket, plastic garbage. And you know, when it's half full or so, I'll sit down in an afternoon and process them all. Um, it's easier than doing them one at a time and a lot easier doing them than waiting till you have one or two five gallon buckets and then then it becomes tedious. So we will pull the rest of the wires out.
And there's the main hiring wiring harness. Um, a far cry from the older microwaves, but and now pulled the wires off the magnetron that go to the transformer and the capacitor. Pull out the transformer. I have a feeling it's double aluminum. Aluminum. And aluminum. A lot of guys will still throw this into shred. My aluminum wire I get 60 cents a pound for. Uh, that's 20 cents higher than I get for aluminum. So I still tear these apart, uh, grab the aluminum wire out of them, throw them in a barrel, uh, and then get prepared steel on the body. So I will process this later as well. Uh, now for the magnetron. Shred. And it's got anywhere from two to four screws that hold it on. This one has three. There's your magnetron. Um, you've got your little brass filter here. You've got your aluminum fins. Of course, your two magnets. There's two small coils of copper wire in there. Uh, they don't add up to a lot, but you're tearing it apart anyway. Might as well grab them. And then of course the core of your magnetron is, uh, it's about six or seven ounces of copper. Um, there again, the newer the microwave, the lighter it's gonna be. Um, and everybody's worried about, you know, the the pink ceramic, the, the beryllium. Um, they haven't used beryllium in microwaves in decades. Um, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Uh, so when I'm, when I'm messing around with the ease, getting the copper core, getting the fins off, I will usually take those up. It, it takes a second. Um, but, um, the danger of those actually being beryllium are slim to none. Uh, I believe it's an alumina oxide that they're using now. Uh, beryllium is too expensive. Um, yeah, this is a Walmart microwave. There's no way in hell that's gonna be beryllium. They, they, the, it's too expensive for a Walmart brand microwave. So, uh, that being said, always, always be safer than sorry. Uh, always wear your PPE and take the appropriate precautions. Um, and I kind of quit taking these control panel circuit boards, but for the sake of the video, and now that I have a local place to sell these to and don't have to don't have to stockpile them in the quantities I used to. Uh, I can get rid of them a lot quicker, so I will start taking these out again. And there's another uh, low-grade circuit board. Uh, you got your er, transformer there with the uh, copper in it. You got one MOSFET there. Uh, a couple of relays, there's a little copper spool in there. If you want to go after those, about the only thing I'll take off of this is the IC. Um, I take those off, put them in a uh, Pringles can, and uh, they add up quick. So, low-grade circuit board, and that's it on a microwave. Uh, everything else is shred. I know some of you can get irony aluminum on your... Uh, 
on your capacitors, I can't. They they just go a shred. So now, now so I can get a, a nice box to put back into my trailer or truck for transport, I'll close this back up. And that's why I saved the screws. Takes a little extra time, but Do that top one. So now you're back to perfect box. They they stack very neatly on your trailer or truck. And if you take them in this way, you've got a good uh, bin here for your screws and your small small shred items. Sorry, that was really loud. Uh, so there it is. I, I, it's been six days since I put out my last video. Um, wanted to get another one out. Uh, this is the three items I had on hand. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching, getting my watch hours up there. Um, hopefully by, um, I don't know, at the rate we're going, um, possibly the end of October. Uh, I could be monetized or shortly thereafter. So uh, that's what we're going for, guys. And I appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you scrapping.